Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. This is the principles of electrocardiography. We are going to discuss the introductory principles, basic ECG waves, ECG leads, the normal ECG, the electrical axis and the axis deviation, atrial and ventricular enlargement, ventricular conduction disturbance, which is pontic branch block, myocardial ischemia and infarction, sinus rhythm, supraventricular arrhythmias, ventricular arrhythmias, atrioventricular heart block, miscellaneous ECG patterns, and cardiac arrest and sudden cardiac death. First of all, before going to see some ECGs, we're going to discuss the basics of electrical stimulation of the heart, and then we will see some ECGs. Normally, the signal of the electrical stimulation starts at the sinus node, which is the SA node. This node is located in the right atrium near the opening of the SVC. Thus, from the SA node, the stimulus spreads first to the right atrium because it is in the right atrium, and then to the left atrium. This, this is happening within milliseconds, and then it will be followed by contraction of both atria. So SA node just start the firing of the impulse, then the impulse will depolarize the right atrium, which is there, and then will go through the interatrial septum to depolarize the left atrium and then contraction will ensue. Then the stimulus spreads to specialized conduction tissues in the AV junction that includes the AV node and the bundle of his. So then we have the AV junction which is composed of upper part of the AV junction which is AV node and then the bundle of his. Then the left and right bundle branches that transmit the impulse to the ventricular muscle fibers, leading to contraction of the ventricles. The AV junction acts as a bridge connecting the atria and the ventricles. It is located at the base of the interatrial septum. The upper part of the AV junction, that is the AV node, and the lower part is called the bundle of Hess, as we said before. The bundle of Hess is then divided into right and left branches. The right branch, with, which is the RBB, right bundle branch, it transmits impulses to the RV, right ventricle, and the left branch is transmitting the impulse to the LV. The left bundle branch is then divided into left anterior and left posterior branches. The electrical stimulus spreads simultaneously down to the right bundle branch and the left bundle branch into the ventricular myocardium by way of the specialized conducting cells called Purkinje fibers that are located in the ventricular myocardium. This illustration is showing the conducting system of the heart. This is the SA node right at the opening or the orifice of the SVC, superior vena cava, into the right atrium. The SA node starts the firing of the impulse that will first, within milliseconds, will depolarize the right atrium, then the impulse will go through the interatrial septum to the left atrium. After depolarization of both atria, the impulse or the electrical activity will be collected by the AV junction, which is the AV node in the upper part and the bundle of Hess, and then it will move down the right bundle branch and the left bundle branch, and this left bundle branch will then be divided into left anterior and the left posterior branches. And then the myocardium will get stimulated through an embedded very fine specialized fibers that is embedded within the myocardium that's called Purkinje fibers. These fine small fibers is called Purkinje fibers. From this illustration, if it told you that depolarization of both atria will take about 0 0.12 of a second for full depolarization of both atria. So it will be logic if I tell you that atrial dilatation, especially left atrial dilatation, will cause prolongation of the duration of the atrial depolarization. And also, it will be logic if I tell you that ventricular hypertrophy or enlargement will change the duration or voltage of the electrical stimulation of the ventricles. This picture is from the 1925 when a gentleman with a complete suit, 
he was putting his hands and his left foot inside the certain solution to record his electrical activity of the heart. And also, lead one was still there from the right to the left, and lead two from the right arm to the left foot, and then lead three from the left arm to the left foot, and it is still like that till now. Basic ECG waves. When the heart muscle is stimulated, by the electrical impulse, it depolarizes. Then it will repolarize again to the normal state. So the electrical activity will go from depolarization to repolarization and so on. The depolarizing electrical current is recorded by the ECG as B wave when the atria depolarize. So B wave is due to atrial depolarization. And as a QRS complex, when the, the ventricles do so. The ventricular repolarization is recorded as ST segment, T wave, and U wave. Atrial repolarization is usually obscured or buried by the ventricular potentials. The U wave, if it is there, it is a small deflection, sometimes seen just after the T wave. It represents the final phase of ventricular repolarization, although its exact mechanism is not known. So this is the B wave, this is atrial depolarization, and then this is the QRS complex, QRS complex, this is ventricular depolarization, and then from this point, which is the end of the S wave, and junction between the S wave and the ST segment is called the G point. So the ST segment, and then the T wave, and if there is a wave, it will be right here, this is the ventricular repolarization. So we have something missing, missing here, which is atrial repolarization that is, should be here, but it is obscured by the QRS complex. The ECG paper. The BQRST sequence is recorded on a special ECG graph paper that is divided into small boxes, these small boxes. Each small box is one millimeter square in width and height. The paper usually moves on a speed of 25 millimeters per second. So, so the ECG paper is coming out of the machine, either it is a big paper or a strip, it is coming out of the ECG machine by a certain speed which is 25 millimeters per second. Therefore, horizontally, if I told you as I told you just now that one millimeter here equals one small square. So 25 millimeters per second is 25 small squares per second. So the second is rep represented horizontally here on the ECG paper by five big boxes. One, two, three, four, five. These five big boxes, because every big box is composed of five small boxes. So every big box equals five. So five big boxes equals 25 millimeters or equals 25 small boxes in width. So the big box or these heavy lines forming big boxes equals one fifth of a second, 0 0.2 of a second. But the small box equals 0 0.04 of a second. This is horizontally, but vertically, now we are talking about voltages. Horizontally, we are talking about durations. Vertically, we are talking about voltages. The ECG machine is standardized to give every one millivolt of electrical stimulation 10 millimeters in height. And this is a sign, or this is a mark called standardization mark. This can be found on the ECG paper spontaneously by the machine made automatically by the machine, or I can produce it by a button called one millivolt button. You can find this button in many ECG machines, especially the old versions. You will find this button, and it is written over it one millivolt. By pressing this button once, you will produce one millivolt electrical stimulation, and then you will look to the ECG paper to see what mark was produced. If it is covering 10 millimeters, in height, so your standardization 
is right. A wave of deflection is also described as positive or negative. Depends on what. An upward wave, like this R wave, is called positive. A downward wave is called a negative, like this T wave. It is negative now. A wave that rests on the baseline is called isoelectric, like the ST segment or the BR segment. This is isoelectric line or isoelectric. A wave that is partly positive and partly negative is called biphasic, like the QRS complex in some beads.